Hello and welcome to Panther Geeks. You join us for another unboxing video. This is Warhammer Quest Silver Tower. Oh, hey! Which is a game, well, Warhammer Quest at least, I've been waiting to come out again for probably since 1995. <laughs> no, quite a bit. Since the year 2000 ish. Can't remember when they stopped mm. making it and uh, stopped making all the add ons for it, which I had at one point. Uh, I found all the parts of the main game, the old one actually. Yeah. Um, apart from a couple of bits which have gone mm. missing. But uh, yeah, I loved Warhammer Quest. It was great. We used to play it when we first got married, didn't yes. we? When we moved. Where I dug all the parts out. You dug all the parts yeah. and we. Yeah. You taught me how to play it. Well, even that was like. It was over eight years ago. Yeah. So luckily, most of the parts are still together from that. So mm -hmm. um, here we go. Here's the new one. Tazinch. Tazinch, Tower Tazinch. Again, my god. Oh, okay. This, this okay. Whatever. You've had all your corn stuff. <laughs> To be fair. Yeah, corn has been quite... So this is the box. It's quite thin actually. It's it still is. heavy though. It, it is actually. If you haven't seen this already, where have you been? I mean, there's pictures of this stuff all over the net. I know there's a bunch of unboxings already gone up, but we're going to do ours uh, and put the models together and stuff like we normally do. You've not uh, seen ours yet. Yeah, that was, that was really cool. That was much better. <laughs> even though they're exactly the same. For some reason, no, ours are better though. No, ours are better. I don't know. <laughs> I, ca I cannot... Uh, We're biased. Yeah, I'm biased. And, and uh, citation needed on that statement, obviously, but I can't prove that in the slightest. But let's uh, get this thing unboxed. I'm, yeah, I am really excited to get in. I'm hoping it's as good as the original. I'm not sure whether it will be or not, but I'm hoping mm. it will. Mm. It's not the exactly the same rule. I mean, just this whole pit sort of draws me in as much as the original does. I already know there's not a role playing book in this, which is unfortunate because that was one of my favourite things from Warhammer Quest, the original. But I like the fact they've used the same artwork because that's the same logo mm. from the original Warhammer Quest. So here we go. Ooh. We have. Lots and lots of models. Lots of models. So if you were too young to have seen the original Warhammer Quest, it had lots of models in as well, and doors <laughs> and everything. Um, if you're as old as I am, you'll, you'll know what I'm on about. But these look like the hero models. So we have Fire Slayer, that's one of the owls, I don't know which one, that's the other elf, that's the warrior priest, there. Uh, and here we have uh, the Stormcast Eternal, that looks like the part of the ogre thing which is one of the bad guys, and another part of the ogre thing. And then possibly that's the Chaos Chieftain which Quail, Quail, Claire, Claire, <laughs> my wife, uh, loves. Claire. I couldn't get my words out. <laughs> oh. Claire. <laughs> oh yeah, that wasn't the warrior priest and that's the warrior priest. Oh, that's the warrior priest. Which one it? was that then? Oh, I missed it. Which one? That one. Who was that? Is that the other elf then? Wow. Yeah. We'll, we'll find out when we get the other screws anyway. Yeah, that's the other elf. No, that's the um, sorcerer. Tazink sorcerer. Tazink sorcerer. Yeah. Oh, the guy sorcerer. Yeah, the pan sorcerer and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, he's really cool. <laughs> And box the uh, the gaunt somewhere just about Christmas. Yeah, we did. Uh, this one looks just as cool. And here is a bunch of demons. And I can see a rat man in the middle. And uh, I see some orcs. So orcs, or goblinoid type things. I think that's that one. Cool. No, that's a familiar actually. I'm seeing because they're cool as well. I like the fish. And there's all sorts on this. There's a fish as well. I like there's the fish. Claire's claiming the fish. I claim the fish. Everything else to the inch is mine though. All right, we've got. <laughs> I want that going out there, even though I like the fish as well. I might have to get another set just to get the fish. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> might go a bit far there, I think. <clears throat> right, dice of many colours. Uh, I'm sure there's a song in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I rolled my dice of many colours. Okay. There we go. There's your song. And I've got some uh, cards. Some Griffhound. One request silver tower exploration cards. I wonder if they're going to be done separate then. It's just with it having the barcode on and everything. And whether mm. it's some new packing system they've got. I don't know. But there's a barcode. <coughs> Excuse me. And we have the cards for the model. Again, they're separate with the little barcode on. It might just be a packing thing. But maybe mm. they'll do them separately as replacements, which would be ace. Bring the bit store back. Uh, so we've got a guidebook, which we'll read first, and we'll be going through later in the video. And then we have the... Ooh, we have the tiles. I'm going to pass to Claire, and Claire's going to uh, 
Go on, and open these up. Okay, can I make a little baggie? Let's open the tile. Let's open the tile. So let's get the oh. tile version. Because we have all this stuff in here. There's the rules for actually putting the models to the rules instructions. He says. Have you, have you missed getting them off yet? Yeah. They're very much like the um, uh, one, the over, Overkill, Overwatch. Overwatch. Overkill, yeah. Overwatch. Over, overkill, Overwatch. I don't know that. Overwatch, Overkill. Yeah. Um, very much that kind of uh, board tile. Brilliant. Um, so there's the instructions. We have the guidebook. Read this first, which we'll go through in a minute. I might, should we go through that quickly? And we have the adventure. Do not read until instructed. Uh, so we'll read this one first. We won't read the adventure book just yet. Now we also have a little advert for the app, which I might download and see if it's any good. Look, I bet it'll be an app app purchases to be fair. Uh, it's free to download though, but hmm, we'll see how free it is. <laughs> well, from what I hear, there's um, extra characters that you can get. Yeah. Um, I think the app will allow you to use any model in the... Um, Age of Sigma Age of Sigma range. range, yeah. Any heroes? Yeah. Cool. Um, they're bringing out the Slaughter Priest, aren't they? And yes, um, they're, they're coming out. We're trying to get hold of those cards at some point. But um, let's have a look at this guidebook, which you meant to read first. I'm just going to move this out of the way. Oh, welcome, Waltons. And we shall there we go. I'm not going to read it all out. Yeah, I used to narrate this lot, look at it. I shall just show you that, and you can pause the camera if you wish. There we go. And then we have the Legends of the Silver Tower. Okay. Nice artwork, which is pretty much what Age of Sigma has got so far. Um, but it's got nice artwork. It has, actually. Look at that. I do like the artwork. Um, I'm looking forward to getting some points goths and stuff for them though. I am, to be honest, I think that might help. I think this might, might bring people in. I think this will as well, to be honest. Yeah. If they do support this as a game, which I'm hoping they do, um, I think this would help Age of Sigmar a lot. Six cards, ten chambers, eight portals, ten in nine ingress, and ten adventure books. So that's how the thing's made up. Pictures there of the old adventures. Not all miniatures, but miniatures. new miniatures. New miniatures. <laughs> of the eight miniatures. No, new miniatures. Mm. All painted. I'll try and do my best with them. Uh, the first round, so we have rounds and phases. This is the rules. But what we'll do, we'll probably, after we've done the unboxing video, um, stay tuned, we'll probably do a playthrough. Um, actions, making actions, basic instructions. It's not a very thick book, thankfully, so. It's actually about the same thickness as the original rule book, for, if I remember right. I might have to get them out and compare. There we go. Moving through, miniatures, all the rules for this. Visibility. i have to have a good read of this. Adversary phase. Later rounds. A few other rules. Plenty of rules. And then. Um, Rerolling, companion, stunned, blah blah. Limited adversities, ad adversaries even. <laughs> Other adventures, the ongoing quest. And a little bit about each of the heroes. Night quest or Fire Slayer Doomseeker, Excelsior War Priest. The Darakoth Chieftain. It's possibly the coolest model in the box. Not that any of them aren't cool, to be fair, they're nice models. Mistweaver Sire. And a Tenebral Shard. Tenebral Shard. Now we have the Dens of the Silver Tower. And we have the Gaunt Summer in the rules for the Gaunt Summer out of there. And the little guys have got names as well. We've got Tweak, Blot, Pug, and Slop. <laughs> cool. And we have the 
Fulgoroid Thaumaturge, the Skaven Death Runner. Uh, we have Tizanagors, awesome. The Grot Scutlings, they're the Orc ones. Oh, I'm still after uh, The Horrors, and the Keric Acolytes. Probably not saying any of these right. Not real words anyway, I don't know most of them. Uh, the made up ones. And we have a reference sheet on the back. So that is the first book. I'll have a good read through that before we do the playthrough. And then the, the second book is the adventure book, which we're not meant to go through until I'm sure to do so. So uh, let's take a look at the cards that we get with this. So these must be the actual dungeon tiles. Read passage 27, read passage 15. So, alright, so must be things you must read from the book when you put them down. Quite interesting. Bestial Fury, Librarian, and Merry Chase, the Star Nexus, Strange Alchemy, Alchemist Den, Cursed Roft, the Narrow Ledge, Flame Keepers, The Way Divides, Cross Paths, Crystal Junction, Truth Reflected, Beyond the Glass, Leasing the Dead, Golden Tomb, Conundrum, Shadow Garden, The Imps Horde, Perilous Footling. Mysterious Vortex, Abandoned Nest, Whirly Geek Passage, a Sickening Turn, Leap of Faith, Iron Spawn, Living Path, Shifting Plates, Wizard Trial, Warrior's Gaze, The Man in Pursuit, and The Sodden Chamber. So those are all the uh, dungeon cards we looked at. We also have the Griffhound card, which I imagine goes with the Warrior Priest. Yeah. Which Claire has claimed. Yes. Mine. Which one haven't you claimed? Uh, what heroes do I get to use? One of them. Okay, I thought so. I'll just play Zinch, I don't mind. <laughs> uh, I don't think Zinch is a playable character, unfortunately. That's a damn shame. And we have these other cards here. Uh, smaller ones. I don't know why these are like fate cards or something. So I can just say, I have fate. Damn it. Here we go. I have fate. One step ahead. Reaper of Lives. Battle Wraith. Chosen. Divine Will. Etheric Surge. Living Fortress. Wellspring. War Dancer. Vengeful Strike. Air Strider. Evasive. Life Bane. Fires of Battle. Unstoppable, Hung Mind, Jaws of Death, Eyes of Foros, Celestrium, Luxstone, that one, Wrath Blood, Source of Shield, Amulet Fury, Ring of Celerity, Trickster's Brew, Warpstone Bomb, Ariel's Kiss, a Filter of Luck, Death Rune, Miss Miser's Chalice, uh, Gem of Command, Unseen Amulet, Basilisk Tongue, Casket of Azir, Phoenix Heart. I didn't notice that they are different colours. There's purple ones and there's blue ones. And they're backs that match. So two different decks. Huh? Finally, cards wise, I believe, finally, mm -hmm. we have the Hero Cards. I know you can get foil ones of these, but we didn't get any because we didn't pre order, unfortunately. Oh well. But we've just got the normal cards. So we've got the Knight Questor. We have the Dakaroth Chieftain. We've got a better look at these, shall we? I'm rushing through this stuff because I want to get the models together. But we have a Guard Stance 3 Plus, Challenge 2 Plus, Traits, the Knight Questor, Celestial and Relenting, Renown. And every save rolls roll of 6, again one Renown. There we go. I don't know what any of this does yet. We shall find out. The Darakoth Chieftain. There he is. Charge 6 Plus, Death Blow, Traits. Chaos can blade bomb. Renown. If you inflict eight or more wounds in a turn, you gain one renown. Mystery of a Sire. Glimmer Mist. Traits Arcane and Swift. A Tenebral Shard. How do you say that? Tenebral Shard? I'm not good with that. Tenebral. Tenebral. Yeah. Is that a real word? It's probably made up. So I've heard it before. It probably is a real word. <laughs> I'm showing how illiterate I am now. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, Shadow Strike and Graceful Killer. Traits Renown. Bladeborn and Swift. <laughs> Excelsior War Priest. 
don't know why I said it like that. Excelsior. Um, Sigma's Boom Command, Trait, Celestial and Holy. And a Fire Slayer Doom Seeker. There we go. Runic Power, Throwing Axe, Traits, Unrelenting and Blade then. So there we go. So recently, I don't know if we, did, we didn't film it, did we? We played Warmer Quest, the card game. We, might, we did actually. If yeah. you want to see that, put it in the comments, we'll do a film of that. We just played it between ourselves, we got it, and it was eight. It was we really, really good. It. Yeah. Uh, Those actually remind me, these some of actually them do. remind me of the cards out of there. Yeah, fair. they're similar, because you get a warrior for it. Yeah. But the dwarf's a proper dwarf, not a fire oh, no, dwarf. No, not one of them. I want a proper dwarf. <laughs> That's my only, that's my only bugbear. I want a proper shield bug. One thing I want to say about these cards are a bit flimsy. You might yeah, want, I noticed that when I was You might them. want to uh, laminate them. That's probably not a bad idea to be fair. Um, so I so said we'll go through the adventure book in another video when we actually play the game. I don't want to spoil it for anyone, so I'm not going to go through it. Because it says don't read it until you've done the instructions. So I presume that tells you about the adventures. Uh, but here we have the instructions. So we have heroes and adversaries. One to one to six is the heroes. So first up is the Night Questor. Let's find him, get the parts together, and we'll put him together. This is the sprue for the Night Questor. There we have the front part of the body and the back with the cloak. We've got two arms, and the shield one with the sword, and we've got the head. Ah. So pretty much standard looking. He does look pretty cool though. I think he's uh, sword and shielded the way around there. I was gonna say that but they're different, aren't they? Yeah, he looks as different as a Stormcast can look from another Stormcast. <laughs> which we should say, not much, but still, very cool. Yeah. Uh, it should be easy to put together. B1 goes into B2, then the arms go on, and the head goes on. So I will just stick him together and show you what he looks like when he's done. There he is. He's a quite nice model, actually, just as even as a Stormcast Eternal. I do like him. I can't wait to call Claire Painting because she's doing the heroes. Oh, thanks. Well, you said you wanted to do the heroes. <laughs> and you said I wasn't allowed any, so there we go. But you can have him. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'll go on my others, so. So next up is the Fire Slayer. Slayer. <laughs> Fire Slayer, Doom Seeker. Fire Slayer, Doom Seeker. Right. So we have parts um, on the sprue, though. These are all little bits. So there's a few more on this one. We've got a cool looking axe, so. Uh, we have the only part that I really like about these guys is the helmet, to be fair. The helmets I, are quite cool, actually. I prefer my dwarves with, with clothes on, you see. Uh, unless they're proper slayers and don't have any clothes on. But I prefer my dwarves with full armour and shields and proper going... That's, that's my That's image. like half and half, that, it's, isn't it? It's my image of a dwarf. This really... I know it's a different kind of fantasy and they're going for it. And it's not a nice... It's not saying it's not a nice model. It is a nice model. I'm just saying, I'd like to see some more dwarves because I've heard in the rumour mill that they are doing some more dwarves, like a different sort of version. Oh, that right. stayed, I think the ones that stayed in the Zia, so the ones that were full armour and stuff, so that could be cool. But the fire slayers didn't really do anything for me, unfortunately. There's a few bits I liked, but it wasn't enough to get any. But now we have one, so at least I can paint one, mm. and then that'll probably make me get more. Yes. No, knowing me, I'll be like, knowing actually, I really well. love this model now, I'm going to go and buy loads. Anyway, enough about that. So to make this first part, which is the body, it consists of 1F, 2F, 3F and 4F. She makes the full body part with arms and legs. Then 5F, the head goes on. 6F is beard. Uh, 9F is like a hook type thing, it's like a hooky spear. And then 7F looks like more beard. And then 8F is the axe. So we shall put them together and get them to this stage. And we'll have a look. Okay, so here's the body. Um, four parts together now. Really, went together really easily. Um, they're not snap or anything. You do need uh, plastic to put them together. But there we go. That is the four parts of the body. They fit really nicely together. No gaps. Next up is 5F, which is the head itself. This bit here. Or at least it's the helmet part of the head. Um, yeah, this bit gets a bit like Malifaux. Oh, God, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the head bit goes on, and then we have 6F as well. So I'll match the, the 6F to the 5F first to finish off the head, and then we'll put that onto the body. Yeah, so just so you can see, there is the face. Like Claire said, a bit like Malathon, just not as fiddly by any means because those two bits just go together like that. But it is a, it is a separate face. <laughs> I don't know if the other fire slayers are like that because of the way the beards are, but that one is. 
That goes on there, and then that will then go on over there. And then you've got this bit as well. Which is another bit so of beard. Enough, which is a bit of beard. Sorry. That's still over there though. Alright. Oh, got to do this bit first. So we'll put the head together. There is the head on the model. Look pretty cool on me. We have the seven F, which I believe fits. Where does that bit go? It looks like it goes onto the on the Yeah, there is a little nodule on the back of that and a little indentation on there. So that will go there right next to his face. Close to the camera. Yeah, so that'll go on there. And then we'll put the weapons on, so when he comes back he should be finished. So far, I did actually miss off, there's a, there's a 10F and an 11F. Which Claire just cut off the sprue. Uh, which is a little horn. A little horn. Which attaches to his belt. And a little axe. Which attaches to his belt to the other side, does it? Mm-hmm. So the horn goes on that side, and the axe goes under the... So we'll put those bits on, and then he'll be finished this time. So there is the fire slide finished. He's going to stay on his base. There we go. I actually really do like him. I wish I hadn't put him together now. I want some more. <laughs> anyway. There we go. So next up is the Excelsior War Priest with Griffhound. Here is the sprue. He actually reminds me more of like an old fashioned War Priest, something about him. But mm. obviously he looks a lot more detailed. Um, I also got a little griff hound on there. I think you you were taking the rip out of him for saying like oh, he's doing, he man he's doing stance. the he man stance. Um, but he does actually. I think I'd probably paint him green because he just reminds me of like a uh, salamander. <laughs> just the hammers and he's got this claw. Cause it's just the whole the whole thing, and it's just the way they've painted him. He just got oh, a little cool salamander without the armor on. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so we have H three. And we have H1 and H2, um, which make up the body. So there's this bit here, and there's a little plug in his bum, where um, this bit goes. So that goes in there, and then that goes on the back to make this bit. So I'll get all the parts off, and then we'll start putting them together. So those are the first three parts together. Really easily to put together as well. Um, so far the models have been really easy. Um, Next up is H6, which is the hammer he's holding, I think. His head, which is H4. H5 is the book. And then H7 is the little hammer, which is, looks like it goes on his side. Yeah, there's a little nodule just there on his cloak. That probably goes on there. I'll know when I get the parts. So, let's have so a look. the side of the hammer. You see that there? There is a little indentation there on the head of the hammer. And that's where it'll go on the cloak and the cloak itself. So it should fit on there. So I'm going to stick these last bits together. In addition, we've also got the Griff Hound. Here he is. He consists of two whole parts, left and right. So we shall stick those two bits together. And he goes on a small base, one of the original uh, 25 mil bases. So I'll be back once they're both done. Okay, so most importantly is the Griff Hound. There he is. Seems a bit smaller than the other one, I think. Mm. It's cool though, I do like him. I suppose he would need to be a bit smaller to fit on the dungeon. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure the, the other one was on a bigger base and everything. And then we have the warrior priest, who is awesome. Despite the human calls. I like him. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see Claire Payne. <laughs> so next up, our next hero is. Ooh. The Dark Ox Chieftain, Claude's yeah, favourite model from this. Cool. I think he's my favourite model from the Heroes. Yeah. As far as looks go, he does look amazing. But there he is. And so he consists of two main body parts, which is C2 and C1 by the looks of it. And then C3 is like a little loincloth that goes over his butt. And then we have C5, which is his sword, C6, which is his axe, C4 is his head. That's him. Uh, put together. Have you got the sprue? Oh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> we'll start clipping things off. Oh, sorry. That's that's the sprue <laughs> with him on. We'll have a closer look at it. See, those are the parts. Um, <laughs> you know. Um, what's that little one there? Uh, 
don't know. Don't know. <clears throat> uh, that's his head. And we have this bit here. What's that? Are they like oh. uh, adding extras or something? Is it like an optional arm? Is it? Yeah. Then. Oh yes, it's an optional arm, isn't it? So we can. He's got an optional hand, so you can have the axe by the looks of it. And then he has this hand holding what looks like a Tizanagor's head. Tizanagor's head. Oh right. And that's okay. the thing, that's the horns from the head. It doesn't show it on there though. Ah. There you go. Uh, he's got an optional arm. That's a surprise. Pretty cool one, actually. Because you have to make a choice between an axe and a head. Oh, there we go. Choices, choices. So we'll cut all those bits off, um, and it should be pretty straightforward to put together. If there's any problems, we'll be back. Otherwise, we'll be back when he's done. There he is. Chieftain. I remember the axe. Claude mm -hmm. chose the axe. I'm not entirely surprised, being <laughs> all things cornate. Mm -hmm. But there he is. He's very cool. I do like this model. I think so far he's still my favourite one. I really like him. I think he's cool. That, if you can see it there, is the head arm. I did stick it together just so you can see it. Because he's holding a Tizanzagor head. Tizanzagor's head. <laughs> However you say it. So I might use that one on the model, actually. That's why I stuck it together. It does look pretty awesome. Okay, so next up is the mist weaver there is the sprue for the mist weaver that's very delicate looking stuff she has now i'm assuming it's a sea is she is it a sea she sea she seashells on the seashore it's a she i think it's an elf so it's hard to tell yeah bit of breasts must be <laughs> must be one <laughs> that's about okay. that's about the only way you can tell the difference between elves just two little dumplings <laughs> on the front anyway there we go um Miss Weaver Sha. So we shall start by 2e, 3e, and 4e, which makes this part. So we'll cut those bits off and have a look at that. So there's those three parts there. So we've got the leg on there, and then we've got the back of the body on there. Which is why it's at a strange angle. Next up, we have 5e, which goes on there. So we shall do that. And we'll back in a second. So there is 5E and that slides over the top of that to make the roll. So we'll stick that on and then we need the arm which is 9E, a little um, belt buckle type thing which is 6E, looks very elderly, and uh, a little staff, well the staff which is 7E. So Claire's going to cut them off while I stick this together. Yeah. Arms are on, so there's a little belt buckle, which is actually more something the raven guy would have than the elder, I think. It's like a little skull. <laughs> Looks like of a raven or something. So next up we have the head, which is 1E. And you've got 8E. Which is like a, a shoulder spike, pad. A little shoulder spike pad thing. To go on the, goes on the uh, staff arm. So we'll put those bits on, stick to the base, and she should be finished. So there mm. she is finished. That is an awesome model. It's such a cool model. That. I'm sorry, it just is. I didn't. When I first saw the picture of this model, I was like, it was a bit grainy. The picture, I thought, oh, it's rubbish. Yeah, to be fair, you couldn't see them very well. But I love the mist styling, all the way she's jumping up, the, the motion, the model. I love these hooks she's got all over her. Mm. And the little raven type skull she's got on. You can't, the fact you can't see her face, and then she's got this moon thing. She's very dark, shadowy, sort of. Yeah. I'm liking it. Alright, I do actually, I'm very impressed. Um, so next up is Mr Shard. <laughs> um, here he is. So those are the parts for him. There's a few parts on there. Mm. Doesn't seem quite as many as uh, the uh, Mr Weaver, but there we go. I was looking at the uh, fingers. fingers. You've got these long, they? huge like knives on the end. You wouldn't want to be picking your nose with that. They're very much like the ones on her as well. Mm. These hooks. Um, he's like still a little tentacle or something. Like that. I just mm. noticed that. That's cool. Like a zinch tentacle that like he's just trodden on. Right, so 2G, 7G, which are two tiny little bits, which go on to 3G and 1G. 3G and 1G not being some sort of phone network, they are the two sides of the body. 
No, I think it's his face that's 2G and 7G. Yeah, I'll cut those out. They go on the... And then we have 4G on the back. And those tiny arms, it's a 6G. 6G and 5G. I don't know what happened there. Um, 6 and 5G. See? See? So, um, we'll get the body bits together and the head bits together and all. Actually, I'll put the whole thing together. It looks pretty simple. If at any point I feel like I need to stop, I shall stop and show you. There is the body. I just wanted to show you this because there's a little hole in the chest and then the face is missing. A bit like the Malifaux ones, but like the fire slayer dwarf before. So this one goes in the chest, it's like a little X. And then there's a little sort of nodule on the back of that. So I don't know, I tell you what spaceship actually. And then the face has just got this, this bit here has got these horns. And that goes on the front. So I'll stick them together. The rest looks pretty straightforward. And I'll be back when he's done. So here is the shard. <laughs> and again, he's another impressive model. Mm, very, very cool. Far more impressive than the, the first blurry picture I saw of him. Or even the current picture, actually, to be honest. Seeing it in person, seeing it in 3D, having it in your hand. It... it just doesn't do it justice to pictures in any way, shape, or form. So I'm impressed, actually. Mm -hmm. Cool. So he's the last of the six heroes. So next we're on to the villains, or the Denzins, or the... Bad guys. The bad guys. Are we the baddies? We, these are the baddies. Baddies. Well, as bad as you can get, being a Gaunt Summoner. <laughs> the Gaunt Summoner is next. Is he all not? He is. It reminds me of Pan's, yes, <laughs> whoosh. Reminds me of Pan's lab labyrinth with all the eyes on the... Yeah. Much I think like... we said that about the Gaunt Summoner, the other one. Yeah, much like the other one. The, the one I bought you for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's just as cool. That yeah, it does actually. Okay, so 2D and 1D go together, which are the two cloak parts. Uh, so we'll start sticking them together. So there's 2D and 1D together. Need a little bit of fine down around the edges because of where it's been cut off at the sprue. Uh, next up is 3D. There it is. In 3D. No, oh, we can. Um, that bit goes on the front. Again, there's a couple of bits on there. I just need filing down. Uh, that bit goes there. On there. And then we have 5D and 4D, which I believe is the back. Nice. So we have the front of the torso, which is 4D, and the back of the torso, which is 5D. So we'll stick those two bits together, we'll stick that on the front, and then we'll just stick those two together to make that brings us to this. There he is, sort of leaning forward as well. So next up we have 7D, and we have 6D, which is the staff. 7D, is that like... It's like his neck. His neck. So there's the staff. Cool to see and stuff. This yeah. is like his neck. He's, uh, oh, right, I yeah, see. Yeah, it picks into the bottom of his head. So, I think. Yeah, so that connects to the back to match up with the shoulder. And obviously, the, the arm goes on that side. So, we shall stick that one so far. There's the back bit with all sort of like skull, like a bird's skull, crow's skull, whatever. Shoulder pad. Next up, we have the head. Which is the pan's labyrinth bit. Mm -hmm. and there he is. Whoa. So that goes on. And then we have 90, which is the book. Which comes in the book part, which goes on the lower arm. And then there's a little hole in the book. Because he's stabbing the book with the upper arm, which is there. And that's going into the book itself. Um, so it's like he's burning the book with a knife or something, you know, the knife, bur or the book burning the knife. Mm. So I'll get him together, and he'll be finished, and then we'll be back when he's done. So there he is. That's freaking awesome, actually. Uh, tip with the book, I'd stick the two parts of the book together first. Don't try and stick one hand on than the other. It's much easier to put the two parts of the book and then stick them both on. I tried the other way first, and it just felt a bit, so I thought... Just stick them together, you idiot. Well, I heard a little voice in my head that said that. It was probably him. <laughs> probably Boy. got the summoner. He sounds like that, does he? Yeah, he is when he's taking a piss out of me. <laughs> Talks to me a lot. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Going nuts already. Okay, so we, next we have the Ogroid Thermitage. Uh, an Did you get cream for that? Yes, it does sound like something you need cream to get rid of. Um, Thermitage though, that is a Thermitage. Thermitage. It's posh, doesn't it? Mm. Thaumaturgy is one of the old forms of magic from probably just about every single fancy esque realm. I remember even in Vampire the Masquerade, you know, mm. Thaumaturgy is one of the disciplines. <laughs> and um, it's even been in Minecraft, one of the mods we've played. Yes. Um, so Thaumaturgy, there we go. But these are the parts from this is one sprue. Hopefully, you've seen that all been nattering away. There is the other sprue. He looks like a really cool model as well. Mm. All the little runes sort of in his splash. Right, so we'll cut him off and we shall start putting them together. It starts with the legs, which is A1 and A2 is the tail, and the other leg is A3. Um, so we'll get those bits together. And back in okay. So there are the legs and the tail together. Fit together quite nicely at the back though. Next up is A5 and A4 which are the hoops and we have this A6 which is the next part of the body and like the tabard which goes down. So we'll put those three parts on next and we'll be back in a second. So those are the parts on there. The hooves go on only in one way because there's two little notches which show you which feet they go on. That bit sticks on there like that. Next up is A7 please. Yeah. Which is that bit. So the thing this is his back and that bit goes around the tail there and it goes on there like that. So we shall stick this on and then we'll come back to the arms. So there's like a back piece on like that. So we've got this whole centre basically. So that arm's going to go on this side and this uh, this sort of like, not arm, but it's like a hunch. So the top half of his arm and his back will go on this side. So we should put those bits on, and we'll be back in a second, there we go, that's those two bits on. Next up is all these bits, we have the staff, which is there, and we have the horns, and then we have A14, which is, is that his face? Uh, no. What is it? Is it part of his belly? Part, part of his belt, because, I think. Yeah, it's the eye part of the belt. Yeah. So we've got that bit for the belt. We have the horns, and we have this staff, this huge staff, going on there. So we shall stick those parts on, and I'll be back with you in a second. So there is the arm on, and the belt. I haven't put the horns on yet, because they're a bit weird. What they do, they fit into these grooves next to the uh, the mane on either side, just above the head. And if we turn over the page, we have the head itself, which is A13. And the last piece after that is the staff, which is going to be of A16 and A15. But I want the head, because I need to fit the head and the horns on together. So the head goes on in there, and the gaps that are left, the horns will fit in. So it makes much more sense to me to stick the head on first, and then put the horns on afterwards. So I'm going to try it that way, and if there's any problems, I'll let you know. There we go. There's the face with the horns on. They do fit on. Uh, you could actually switch them around and put them the other way because they nearly put them the wrong way around. Um, <laughs> and then it makes them look a bit more further forward. But they do fit on better once you put the face on. So I'd recommend doing that first. So the last thing now is to just put the staff head on and stick him to his base. So those are the two parts of the staff. Kind of like a scaven skull. It just goes together. And then we'll stick him to the base and we'll be done. So here he is. And he's on the large base. A much larger, I think it's like a 50mm base. It says 40mm on the instructions, but there was this large base in the box, free, standing. I don't know why you saw it when we took it out. It wasn't in the packet with the bases. And he does fit on that a much better. And there's no other models that are the size he is. So I assume the base is actually for him and it's a misprint in the book. So I'm going with that, because he looks a lot better on it. And he looks awesome, in general. I like this model. It's Ace. An Ogroid. Not sure about the name. But it's certainly the model. Right. He's the last of the characters. Uh, unless a death one is a class of characters, they're kind of assassins maybe. Uh, maybe assassins are characters, they probably are. Uh, but if they are, maybe they'll just like gutter runners. But anyway, nattering aside, they're the last of the big models, because these take up three parts, and most models that follow are 
a lot less parts. And they're all on these two sprues, which are identical sprues. Don't have to mention that when I took them out. These two sprues are the same. So everything else you see now is doubled up. That's why it's got times two, times two, times two, times two. So we'll show you sticking one together, then we'll stick the other one together. So the skaven consists of three parts, which is actually straightforward because it's the body, an arm, and a head. So I35, I33, and I34. So okay. we'll just stick those two together. We'll be back in a second. That is a Death Runner. This is a cool model for anyone who likes Skaven at all. If you've seen my Skaven army, you'll know I like Skaven. I love the motion of it, the size of it. Very cool. And you get two of them. Here's the other. So next up, we should move on to the Tazangos. And this one, uh, the first one, is numbers 9, 10 and 11. And these are on 32mm bases. So I'll do this one first. Okay, so here we have I10 and I9. Those two parts slot together. So he's, he's carrying two of these moon shed things. And then we have the head, which is there, which is I11. So we'll stick those three parts first together. to the Tzangos. He looks amazing. I have to say, it, it looks a really cool model. I'm really looking forward to painting these guys. It's just really, I'm really happy just to get mm -hmm. any kind of Tazinch models whatsoever. Well, there's not been any out there, yeah. has there really? There's been models for everything else, yeah. but these guys. I hope they'll release them separately as well. Or maybe even more different type of ones. Yeah. Really cool. Anyway, so next is this guy. Yeah. He is part 12, so it's part 2, I2, uh, I1, I thought I said 12 though, but yeah. it's I, well, I2, I1 and I3, which are these parts. So we shall stick these together. I don't think there's going to be any problems with that, because that just goes on there, and then the horns go on. Mm. So we'll stick them together and back in the dust. So there he is, he was really easy to put together actually, just took a few seconds to stick the model, and then a few minutes to put it to dry to the base but there he is, hopefully that is dried uh, two handed weapon we've just been discussing these actually I was sticking together, they remind me they're very Egyptian mm. in the way that they remind me of the like the jackal headed gods and these are like Horus because they're like a bird headed god uh, that you see in the Hieroglyphs I think, they're, well, I think they look amazing actually, I really like them yeah so the last guy because um, there's, there's three different ones and there's six in total, isn't there? Yeah. So the last one, he has a sword and board. So we've had two with two-handed weapons, one with a double-handed weapon and one with sword and board. So we've got one of each type. So we have this body here, which looks cool. And this amazing hook sword that he's got. And then um, we have the even more amazing looking shields. And you go there. Uh, this looks so cool. There's also some other shields later on that we'll see. That look just as cool. But there's his head attached to that. And then we've got the other part of the body, which is there. So he's like in this uh, stance. Like that. And what else? Is those, are those all the parts? Is it uh, just three parts? No, there's those parts there as well. Ah, I've got these horns there. And is that the, the arm? arm? The arm. The so there's actually five parts to this guy. So what we'll do, we'll stick uh, I4, which is that, I5 together. And uh, we shall stick I6, and eight. which is the shield, which is an 8, which is the arm. We'll put those two bits together and back in a second. To your body pieces, which were a bit faffy to push together into the right position. Took a little bit of persuasion. But there now. Same on that one. And then we have the... Um, I8 and I6 together so the hand on the middle of the shield so now those bits will go on like um, pretty much like that and then these last bits are the horns that go on the other side so we shall stick them all together now and we should put them on bases and back when they're done there he is he is very cool I like that one with the shield mm. it's a unit then that'd be awesome cool so what's next? We've done the Tizanigos. Uh, Grot Scotlings. Grot yes. Scotlings. Let's have a look at these guys. Cut some of them off already. Yeah. So are these like interchangeable, optional, interchangeable sides? Yeah. So there's eight of them. And 
37, 36 and 41 is the right side. 36, 30, is that? 37, 39 and 41 are the right side. Yeah. 36, 38 and 40 are the left side. They're interchangeable. So the two part models, left and right. And um, then they go on 25mm bases. So these guys, which I'm going to cut them off and mix and match them, and I'll be back when I've done them all. So here are the Grot Scuttlings, or Spider Grots as we now call them. There we go. So you can mix and match the sides, so each one's actually slightly different, which is pretty cool. Um, there's four with bowls, I don't know if that's something in game we have to worry about, two with spears, and the rest of them are just like our hand weapons and stuff. But I just think it's really cool that these guys have got like eight limbs because <laughs> they got two sets of legs and two sets of arms they've got these tiny little they look more like some sort of grots have been mutated by a high fleet than anything else <laughs> which looks amazing I really like these guys but you see there have been obviously some goblins got near some uh, to the inch towers and got mutated they were probably goblin spider riders and just got melded together with the spiders <laughs> mm. but they're cool I like them so there's eight of them in the box, so we shall move all them out of the way. I'll just show you one of the others with the spears first. These guys are really cool. So next up, we have horrors. Good old demonic horrors. So I think we have two pink horrors mm -hmm. in total. I'll have to cut the blue horrors off. So there's two pink horrors. And two have... blue horrors. So that's a blue, that's a blue. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are the pink ones, are they? Yeah, those are the pink ones. Which consist of two parts. Mm -hmm. Okay, should be pretty straightforward to put together. Let's do that. There is one of the pink horrors. You can see him there, two parts onto the base. Really simple. He's on a 32mm base, even though the book says 25mm. There were a couple of spare bases which have been put in separate to the bag of bases. Uh, all the pictures in White Dwarf show them on the 30mm base, so I think that's why they've put them in. They decided to up the base size for these guys because they're quite large, which is cool. I like them on these size. So I've put them on 32mm. Next up is the Blue Horrors. How many of these are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No, no, 1, 2. These are 4. There's 4 of these guys. 4 in total. So there's yeah. 2 pink horrors, then there'll be. Four blue horrors, and I guess there's eight of the little new brimstone horrors. Yeah. So that makes sense because they split. That's so that one. That's that one, is it? Yeah. So you consist of two parts as well. Mm -hmm. And then you've got that one there. Which also consists of two parts. Yeah, sorry, the pink horror was 13 and 12. This one's 14. 15 and 14. And 16 and 17. And this one is 16 and 17. So we'll stick the blue horrors together. So, blue horror number one. There he is. That's what he looks like. Blue horror number two. This guy's actually throwing some flame. Cool. And then once they die, they now split into brimstone horrors. There we go. So there's two little brimstone horrors on the base. So one of those will become um one of these guys, well two of these guys, there we go, these two, <laughs> <laughs> they are so cool, and the other one, or the other two look like that, oh, they would have liked that if they didn't fall for day, <laughs> but there we go, I've always just glued them on, but easy enough to do. So last up, after being let down by the Brimstone Horror, jumping off his base, <laughs> uh, is the well, the Karak Acolytes, and then we've got the Familiars. But the Acolytes are the last ones actually really need putting together. The familiars just go on the bases. Um, the Acolytes, uh, how many parts are these? So we have two parts, 21 and 20 for the body. And then we have this dagger, which is 22 for him. And then we have 23 and 25 for the body, and 24 for like a pick. And then so on. And this guy's got one of the coolest shields I've ever seen. Very Tazinchi. I'll show you that when we get to it. And he's made up of 27 and 26, and then 28 and 29, which are the two parts of the shield. 
Now this guy's got a halberd. He's got um, parts 32, 31 and 30. So there's eight of them in total, two of each type. So we shall start with this guy. Let's get the parts. The first guy, he has this cool Egyptian sort of headdress, a bit like a, a very small version of a um, Thousand Suns. It's actually really cool. If there's some Thousand Suns like that, that'd be awesome. And that, it's so his back part, that just slides straight on there, like that, glue that in. And this tiny little dagger is actually a huge razor sort of sword, <laughs> when you see it, it actually goes on there. So, Blue Peter style, here's one I did earlier, there he is. Awesome. So I'll get the other one together and then we'll move on to the second, second guy. guy. He's made up of this part, which goes on there. And then you hold on to the other pick, and when he's all together, he should look something like this. He's actually running. <laughs> he's actually look pretty cool, actually. It's a bit weird with that helmet he's got, but that's good. It's a good thing. Good weird. So we'll put him together, and then we shall. Is he the guy with the shield? He consists of this body piece, and then this body piece with this uh, hook scimitar type thing going on. They go on like that. Then we have this awesome shield I was talking about. I just think that looks amazing. Kind of looks almost elfish, like a leaf, and then but you see all these bits coming off. So you see it's like fire or the symbol of Tazinch. And then the arm goes on the other side of that, and this little hole to show you where they go. There's a big hole where the hand goes, and there's two smaller holes where the straps go. And when he's put together, he will look like this dude, who again is awesome. I just think I just think I like sword and board. Mm. <laughs> Anything with shield is cool. There we go. So let's put the other guy together, and then we shall go on to the last of the acolytes. So this guy is made up of three parts. There's the body, and the front of the body with the head, which just fits on. And then we have this uh, halberd type thing, which goes along his back. He's kind of holding it like a Jedi, holds like a two-handed mm. lightsaber, and then he's got his other hand out. So when he's done, he should look like this guy. It's like he's doing a force push. It's cool though. So I shall put the other guy together, and then once we get onto the very last things, which are the familiar, aforementioned familiars, and we'll just show you these off the bases, and then we'll glue them together and show you everything because they are single part models. So we've got Tweak. He's like a mini mini greater demon with no wings. <laughs> He's cool, I like him. We have um Pug. Mm -hmm. that Pug. Yeah. He's the guy with the moon face. He looks like Hamlet. It's like he's doing Hamlet. Oh, God, he's doing Hamlet. I didn't even notice that until he said it. <laughs> I lost poor he... Yorick, I knew him well. It's, it's Moonface doing Hamlet. <laughs> they also like one of the original familiars from, from years back. Then we have Blot, who's a book. Book. That, Wait till you see the back of him. So the spine of the book is the spine of the. It's got a proper spine on it. Yeah. That's cool. That's freaky. It's freaky. I mean, they thought too much about that. I think, but that's awesome. <laughs> uh, and the last one, close favourite. Merlock. Kind of a Merlock, yeah. <laughs> uh, slop. He's the walking fish. If fish could walk, it would be Slop. <laughs> There we go. So we're just going to put these on the bases and then we're going to have a look at the whole range together. Here is the mass of models you get in it. It's quite a bit, to be yeah. fair. Um, so, lower to higher. There we go. <laughs> uh, so there we go. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy putting those together. I'm going to thoroughly enjoy painting them. Mm. Uh, they do look really good. Um, I'll be impressed by all those models. Even the ones I didn't really careful when I saw the pictures. Yeah. I've just been like, no, oh, these are really cool. Yeah. Putting them together, especially yeah. that one there, the mist weaver. Yeah. I'm is really it? impressed, uh, to be honest. I want to see more of this. No, I haven't even played the game yet. I we were actually talking about expansion packs they could bring out, or yeah. standalone games for the other gods. I, I would hope they would bring out one of these for each of the Chaos Gods, mm. with different heroes in. Mm. From various like undead heroes and orc heroes and yeah. and even more chaos heroes, I, I'd like to see that. A bit, uh, bit like 
zombie side black plague and wolfsburg yeah. kind of thing have um extra tiles in that pertain to yeah each guard. that guard yeah because you've got the tiles in there it also gives a uh, scope to see new things because obviously we've seen the bolt brimstone horrors we've got these little um lead grots here yeah. which are awesome and then we've got newer versions of skaven and then we've got the tzandagos who've been in the law forever but i've never seen them and then we've got acolytes which are amazing we, we know they've been about in different forms mm. And another gone Somna, Somna, which is awesome. And this guy, the um, dude that needs some cream. Yeah. Mm. Uh, or Ogigo, or whatever he was. Yeah, you, you're just being nice now. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Try and make it sound less like hemorrhoid. Yeah. Uh, well. Right. But Thaumaturge, we'll go with that, because I like that word. Yeah. There we go. I really like this. I want to see more of it. And the next... Um, Next video we'll do on this, we'll actually do a playthrough. Mm. I don't know whether there is like a, a t I haven't looked in, tutorial in a tutorial, or... I don't know if there is one in the book or not. If there is, we'll do that. If there's not, we'll play whatever the first quest is mm. with whatever heroes we pick. Um, but also there's an app coming out, if you haven't heard that, it's by the millions of people that are telling you about it, which gives you um, more heroes. Yeah. So you can use any of the heroes in your collection. Yes. Pretty much. That's what it says on the blurb. We'll find out when the app comes out. I'm not sure whether it's uh, pay as well. Um, you know, like you, I you, think you get it for free. I think you can download the app for or free. But I think if you want yeah. to play as any of the other races, have you'll buy, have to buy yeah. that card. I, I feel it'll be like that. Yeah. Uh, it depends on how much they are as to, or whether you just buy it all as a bundle, maybe. 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 Don't know. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Yeah. And we'll report back on that, probably when we do the playthrough. Mm -hmm. But there we go. That is awesome. I'm looking forward to playing it. I'm going to go away and read the book now, and then we're going to have a game. And then when we're ready, we'll record some more, and we'll be back with you. Yeah. But until then, you take care, guys. Please like and subscribe. It helps out loads. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.